Oh, hey, it's Lisa. I was having a good time the other day playing with some epoxy clay and some Tim Holtz products and realized that these little mini ink blending tools that you get from Tim Holtz Ranger ink would be fabulous if they had a little bit more appeal. So I used some epoxy clay that I had and paints and some, well, you'll see a lot of Tim Holtz products, but I wanted to share with you what I did to 11 of them because they turned out sort of fun. This one, these all started off as this, and I wanted to make sure I could still use them as an ink blending tool and not make them too cumbersome. But this was my first one I did, and I thought it turned out really fun. Nice little mushroom with some ladybugs. And there is, um, you know, made sure I kept it where you could just keep using it. You can see this was an old one that I had. It's all stained from ink, but it's still extremely usable. They still stand. Um, they'll still fit in my little cubby where I keep my ink blending tools. But just wanted to share with you what I did to all of them. The gills are there. This one turned out so fun. I loved it. So this, uh, most of this is just uh, distress paint from Tim Holtz. I did coat them and cover them in a in Liquitex professional varnishes so that the paint would be protected since distress paint. It is a permanent paint once it dries, but you know, we use these things quite a bit and they could take some wear and tear and I've dropped a bunch of them. So I wanted to make sure that they wouldn't break or get stained. And if they did, I could easy wipe them off and the Liquitex professional varnishes, make sure you can do that. You can buy the varnishes in high gloss or satin and matte and then this is the Tim Hulk's, let's see, what is that? It's Rusted Wilderness. And I think Candy Apple, is that right? I should have looked at all my colors. And then there was a couple of them I didn't have quite the paints for on some of these others that I used a couple of acrylic paints, but most of them are Tim Holtz Distress Paint. And I used epoxy clay so that if I drop them, it's fine. They won't break. Um, this stuff, when it dries, it's, it's almost like a rock. I mean, you can break it, but you really have to work hard at breaking it. And then here's one that I made using his, some of his Ideology Halloween products. The, skull, the mini skulls and the pumpkins. The pumpkins don't come with stems. They come sort of, um, well, here. His pumpkins come like this. And so I just added some paint washes and some epoxy clay for stems. And these were some of the bones. I don't know if the bones are, I think might be discontinued. So I bought some packages a while back and the little skulls in the ideology line. The rest of it is epoxy clay that I just put into shapes like leaves and vines and stones and a little R.I.P. on it. I love Halloween. So much fun. So this one will obviously be for my oranges, probably my orange inks. I like to have a mini tool for uh, each basic ink line. It keeps me where I stick it in where my inks are and I can grab it and usually it has, you know, a little foam on it with that color on it so that I don't have to keep changing out the, the ink pads. This is my favorite one, cephalopod, I guess. I don't know if it's an octopus, squid, I don't know, but I just shaped him out and I think he looked pretty cool. That's actually, see the lighting, it's just a seashell that it's a real seashell. And then I had the epoxy sculpt wet and I dipped it in clay, I'm um, clay, in sand to make it have a little sandy base. I think it turned out pretty cute. And this is Tim Holtz uh, brick red distress paint. And then there's the speckled egg. There's some twisted citron, which isn't showing up very good under the light and then yellowish paint. Um, you have the Tim Holtz foundry waxes and they, you just heat them up and they melt and they give a nice little shiny metallic glow. Isn't he cute? He turned out so cute. I love them. He's my little friend. And then on the other end of that was, what well, started all this was actually I had got the, um, the new Tim Holtz Distress Ink line of Uncharted Mariner. And I was sitting there and when I looked at it, you know, it does, it just gives you that feel of the ocean and it's a great color line. And so I had made this one with some uh, tentacles and I painted those in the Uncharted Mariner. And then this is the Weathered Wood Distress Paint. And that's just a, a metal charm, just an anchor metal charm. 
um, I molded a little compass, I don't know if you can see that, out of a, a mold that I had. I can't see it very good. But anyway, I uh, did use the foundry wax on that too. But on this one, I coated it in resin to protect it. And it just seemed like it was a little too shiny. So that's why I switched over to the Liquitex varnish. But I sort of like that. It reminds me of the, the post that you would see out in uh, on the beach, like when you're getting ready to walk on the sidewalk. And they always have the post there. But this one's just all tentacled up and octopus. I like it. Yeah, I think the resin was probably not a good idea, even though I think it will protect the paint better. Um, it just made it way too shiny, but I still like it. My little ropes. So everything is uh, out of epoxy clay, and except for things like the charms, which is just a metal charm. And then my steampunk version. I love her. So this is the Tim Holtz Mini Gears and um, Tim Holtz, I think they're called Sprocket Gears Charms. I don't know, can you see that very good? Let me see if I can get some white. See if it'll blow your eyeballs out of the water here. See if that makes it better or worse, or maybe a little worse. Let's see if the light helps it. No, not really. But this way you can see it a little better. So that's a, a little corset chick, and she's got her wings. Is The wings and the, the sprocket things are all charms. Yeah, that might help a little bit. Some more lights. These are just some little gears I had in my stash, but the bigger gears are Tim Holtz. The wings are just a charm. And on the back, that's a Tim Holtz mini gear. Uh, the little zipper is just, I just sculpted that out of clay. And then these are those little micro beads. I don't know if you've ever used those. I keep them for quite a bit of things. These little itty bitty teeny weeny beads. I have them in several colors, and uh, you can get them. A lot of times they'll have them for nails, but they work great with clay or if you're trying to do mixed media. I think they're called micro beads. But let me do a little top hat, and in the top of the hat, top hat is Tim Holtz mini fasteners. They're like little brads that look like little nail heads. So there's that one, little steampunk. Oh, and these uh, the little wings are actually little charms, little tiny charms too. That's actual little clock parts in there. I, I love my steampunk stuff, so I have a little collection of clock parts. And then here is one that, well, it's my personality, but it's the Amethyst Monster. Yep. Uh, Tim Holtz Creepy Eyes. And then I had a bunch of real amethyst chips that I had left over when I was making some wands and uh, a nice... And this, this is real amethyst up here, too. Uh, it's a point that had broken, an amethyst point. And amethyst, real amethyst chips. Can't really see it real good in the light, can you? And then, of course, villainous purple, Tim Holtz Distress Paint. But you can, oh, that's really too bright, isn't it? Well, that didn't work at all. Okay. I wish I had better lighting. I'm in a basement where there's no actual windows, so I'm always depending on my lamps and lights to do everything. Yeah, it's a little better. And I just put some glitter around the bottom to give it a little bit of a little shiny thing. That's the amethyst monster. They look a little better in actual lighting, of course. Wish I had a really nice light. Maybe that's be my next investment. I went to drive my husband crazy because I craft right behind the couch so I can watch TV with him. That way, if I get a big light back here, I'm sure he'll just love that looming over his shoulder. Just everything feeling like the sun is coming from his back. Yeah, he can deal with it. All right, this one is, I called it Celestial. My son helped me plan this one. It's more his style, because he's into some of the, um, I guess, gaming kind of stuff. So he thought this looked like a gaming thing. I don't know. This is um, all Tim Holtz, the Foundry Wax. And I can't remember the names, if it's Gilded and Statue or... Um, there is no paint on it. These are just a color of two of the clays. And then just some clay ropes. And just pan those over with the foundry wax. I don't know if you've seen the foundry wax. Um, they look like this. And they're a Tim Holtz Distress product. And so whenever you put them on something, I actually painted these on with a uh, paintbrush. And then you heat it. 
and once you heat it, it gets shiny and it looks amazing. It's almost like a, a glossy wax. On top is just a clay face made out of um, the epoxy clay and I just split it down the middle in the two different color foundry waxes. Start calling this one Celestial because she looks like uh, an oracle of some kind. Bad news? Good news. Bad craft product? Good craft product. She's a, a like a stone gray and this one's sort of like that, I don't know, like a marble, I guess, look. Stone gray lady, the marble lady. I don't know, maybe she's the angry one. I don't know. They just make me happy. I use a lot of imagination when I'm making things, and if I am truthful to myself, I'm probably more on the scale of about a 10 to 11 year old kid most of the time. Uh, another Tim Holtz creepy eye. I started off trying to make this one look like a dragon, um, you know, with a little bit of like brickwork and a chain, but it just didn't get dragony. And then I realized it's because it's more of a humanistic eye, so I needed more of a dragon eye to make it look dragony. But still, he's got some spikes and some scales, and um, I just put that on the top because, eh, honestly, I can't figure out what else to put on top. So it's just one of those little dollar store glass flat back things that you can use to make tiles with. I think it turned out okay. It's not my favorite, but maybe I'll try to make another one with a dragon eye. I think that would look pretty fun. But I do like the chain. I think that turned out fun. This is probably one of my favorites. This is a coral reef one, and these are all Tim Holtz. Well, not all. There's a couple of acrylics, but most of them are Tim Holtz Distress paints uh, from Villainous Purple and the Uncharted Mariner. Uh, that's just a copper paint. But, you know, you have the can't even think of the names right now. I tried to did my best to try to make some barnacles. Is that going to pick up? Yeah, there we go. Let's make some barnacles and some other like little seashell looking things. This one was actually a mold because it had a little too much detail. Know, how close can you get with this thing? There we go. So we got barnacles and seaweed. And then that is a real starfish that was... Um, I used to live on the Outer Banks of North Carolina and there was a little bitty starfish. He was already passed away and he was dried up in the sun. So he got to come home with me and I put him in some resin to make him into a little half rounded thing that I've had for probably 14 or 15 years and finally found a use for it. These are uh, molded seashells out of clay. They're not real ones. And then this one does not show up well under any light, it just to the natural eye. It's actually really that oceany green color and oceany blue. Uh, there is some different color of the green and blue tones, distress paints, and then some mica. But for some reason, underneath the lighting, it doesn't show up just how vibrant it is. And maybe it's just because um, this is all the Tim Holtz bubbles. It's one of my favorite ideology products that Tim Holtz has come up with. Uh, you can use it for so many things like witches' cauldrons. To me this looks like an ocean vent bubbles, but that's what they look like. Ideology bubbles. And some of the smaller ones are not the bubbles. They're just, um, I guess you call them dew drops. The, um, they're flat packs and you use them on a lot of cards. If you ever watch Jennifer McGuire, she always uses the dew drops on a lot of things. And sort of fun. One more. One more left and it might be my favorite just because Christmas is only about 150 days away. Seems to show up better under white light. It's Sienna! Hi Sienna! Anyway, uh, it's Tim Holtz. He has the little salvaged Santas and they're just these little solid white. Well they look the same material as the um, like these deer and he has some snowmen. You know, sort of that white resin um, and it's really they're really nicely detailed. So this one I colored with his alcohol inks. Alcohol inks in red pepper and botanical color and a little pitch black and then some teak wood. What I did was, because I wanted to give the face some detail, I just did a drop of teak wood on his face and just rubbed it in really fast. And then I took a cotton swab with a little bit of rubbing alcohol or like a sterile alcohol, medical alcohol, all depending on where you are in the world, and just rubbed it a little bit to take off the alcohol off of the high points. So this face can have some detail. The um, then I've just put epoxy clay here, 
and while it was still not dry, I rolled it in Tim Holtz uh, Distress Glitter Clear Rock Candy Glitter to give it that snow appeal. And then the word believe is from Tim Holtz uh, Remnant Rubs, the tiny text. And again, while the clay was still wet, I put the remnant rub on it and I just left it there. I didn't peel off the backing or rub it in. I just left it there. And then once the clay dried, because epoxy clay dries naturally into a hard thing over about um, anywhere from an hour to 24 hours. And so then I just peeled it off and the letter stuck to the clay. So that turned out pretty easy to do. Uh, now trying to figure out how to get Santa on here was a little different because I wanted to make sure it would stay and not be able to come off. So of course the handle, this is the handle that would have been on the base. And so I took, I pried that out. And then on Santa himself, I drilled a hole with a Dremel up through his, his little feet. I inserted a nail about, up to about right here on him. And so outside was about this far of the nail. It was just a small nail. Then that way I, I put that nail into that wood base of the um, of the mini inking tool. And then I stuffed it full of epoxy clay to dry like a rock. So Santa's not coming off. He's going to be on this. Anyway, he's not going to come off. And he will just be a happy little Santa Claus all the way through all my Christmas projects. Anyway, thanks for watching.